Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to be talking to you guys about polycystic ovary syndrome, what it is, what are some of the uh, causes of the syndrome, um, what are some diseases that are highly associated with polycystic ovary syndrome, and then finally I'm going to talk to you guys about some treatment methods to help alleviate some symptoms of polycystic ovary syndrome. So to begin, what is polycystic ovary syndrome? Well, as the name suggests, it involves polycystic ovaries, so uh, ovaries with multiple cysts. And you can actually see this on an ultrasound um, of, of, uh, of a patient's ovaries. You can actually see these like black um, little holes. It looks like black holes. They're actually cysts within the ovary. So what are some of the characteristics or what are some of the symptoms of the syndrome? Well, one of the main ones is menstrual irregularity. And this irregularity can happen um, as, soon as, the, as soon as the patient actually enters puberty. So um, a lot of times these patients will have a delayed onset of menarche or um, a delayed onset of their first period. So they have their first period a little bit later or a little bit older than um, average. They also can have oligomenorrhea, um, which is just having less than nine menstrual periods per year. So they have less menstrual uh, periods um, during their adulthood. Um, and sometimes they can even have amenorrhea, which is no menstrual um, periods at all. So they just go, um, throughout, um, they go throughout their life without having any periods whatsoever. But interestingly enough, um, they can have a regular, uh, what I call regularization um, after the age of 40. And what I mean by that is um, they often have um, a lot of these symptoms such as oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea can actually um, kind of normalize after the age of 40. So um, after, after 40 years of age, they can kind of have more regular periods. And another main characteristic of polycystic ovary syndrome is hyperandrogenism. And this is kind of one of the big ones, um, kind of one of the big characteristics that cause a lot of the visible symptoms that you see with these patients. The first one is acne. Acne is very common in patients with polycystic ovary syndrome because of the high levels of androgens. Another one is hirsutism. Now hirsutism is actually just a, a growth of hair. So they, these patients um, oftentimes will um, grow or have more um, terminal hair growth. So you get this kind of darker hair growing, particularly on their face or on other parts of their body. And then again, another one is um, actually hair loss. So it's almost a kind of a male, male pattern hair loss um, due to high levels of androgens. Now, what is the incidence of this syndrome? Well, the incidence is uh, quite alarming. It's actually one of the most common endocrinopathies in women and typically about 6.5 to 8% of women are affected with this, uh, with this syndrome. So what are some of the medical conditions that are highly associated with polycystic ovary syndrome? Uh, well, first off, uh, approximately 40 to 85% of women with polycystic ovary syndrome are overweight or obese. So um, there's oftentimes a connection between um, BMI and polycystic ovary syndrome. So this leads us to a list of conditions that are associated with o o overweight and obesity itself, such as um, type 2 diabetes. So women with polycystic ovary syndrome typically have an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, again, this follows in line with glucose intolerance and insulin resistance. They also are dyslipidemic, um, which again follows um, insulin resistance. And because they are at a higher risk of over, being overweight or obese, they have a higher risk of um, having obstructive sleep apnea. Another condition that's very uh, associated with insulin resistance and obesity is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And um, women with polycystic ovary syndrome have a higher incidence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And you can see here um, that on the left, uh, that says a normal liver on the left, but in on the right is a is a, a fatty liver, and you can see there's a lot of uh, lipid droplets within the liver there. Again, a lot of these women also are um, also suffer from depression and anxiety. 
And because, as I mentioned before, they have um, menstrual irregularity, they can often have an anovulatory infertility. So if you're amenorrheic, you typically have um, something known as anovulatory infertility. So they, they actually don't ovulate um, properly and they become infertile as a result. Another one is endometrial hyperplasia. Now endometrial hyperplasia is just an, um, an overgrowth um, or excessive growth of the endometrium within the uterus. And now this also leads to an increased risk of endometrial cancer because of the hyperplasia. Now moving on to some of the etiology and pathogenesis of polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, to begin, the etiology is um, an unclear. It hasn't really been elucidated at present. However, um, although the etiology is unclear, it is known that certain individuals are at a higher risk of uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Individuals, um, again, um, who are obese are typically at a higher risk of poly, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, as I mentioned before. Those that are insulin resistant um, are at a higher risk of polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, type 1 and type 2 gestational diabetic moms are also at a higher risk for uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Another one is premature adrenarche. Now adrenarche is the, the start or the commencement of the adrenal glands to produce um, androgens. Um, so during, um, during childhood, uh, people typically produce some amounts of androgens, very low amounts, per, um, particularly low amounts, but um, individuals that have a premature adrenarche are seem, seem to be at a higher risk of polycystic ovary syndrome. And also, um, people with uh, first-degree relatives that have polycystic ovary syndrome are at a higher risk of getting it themselves, and now this lends credence to um, possible genetic influences. So, a lot of these um, may be the cause of polycystic ovary syndrome or maybe the result. It's still not known for sure, but again, the um, first degree relatives seem to seem to show that there is some genetic influence um, with regards to polycystic ovary syndrome. And that kind of leads into the pathogenesis. And indeed, there have been um, multiple studies showing that there is some genetic trait involved. And there does appear to be um, environmental factors that influence the onset or the, the phenotype of the polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, some studies have shown that perhaps there's, uh, there's certain genes on chromosome 2 or chromosome 9. And here's a handful of different um, genes or proteins that may be involved in polycystic ovary syndrome. One um, has uh, one is luteinizing hormone receptor, another one is human uh, chorionic gonadotropin receptor, another one is called FADA, another one is androgen receptor, another one is sex hormone binding globulin, another one is DEN MAD domain containing protein 1A, and the last one again is insulin. So um, there still could be some issue with insulin or insulin signaling that's predisposing individuals for uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. And in fact, um, as most of, most of the associated risks involved with uh, polycystic ovary syndrome show is that a lot of them seem to, have, seem to have insulin involved, such as insulin resistance and obesity and uh, different types of diabetes. And another important thing um, is that insulin is actually um, is actually an activator of fecal cell um, production of androgens. So fecal cells are the cells that actually surround uh, a developing follicle within an ovary. And insulin actually stimulates the fecal cells to release androgens. So again, that's another possible mechanism f um, by which polycystic ovary syndrome causes hyperandrogenism. So now that we know some of the symptoms and some of the risks and some of the uh, diseases associated with polycystic ovary syndrome, um, what are some of the treatments we can give to these patients? Well, one of the first things we like to focus on are some lifestyle, uh, lifestyle changes. Because I, as I mentioned before, um, a large amount of um, patients with this syndrome have uh, are overweight or obese. So we like to um, try to change some of those 
um, parameters. So uh, we like to get them on a diet or exercise just to try to bring them, try to reduce their BMI, try to reduce their weight, and to try to normalize their insulin, um, insulin tolerance and glucose tolerance. There's also some pharmacologic um, treatments as well. And this is t particularly um, important for uh, stabilizing um, the menstrual irregularity. So uh, some of these combined estrogen progestin con contraceptives are, are uh, very effective. Um, oral contraceptives um, uh, can treat not only the menstrual irregularity, but also hyperandrogenism. Um, Something else that's important is medroxyprogesterone acetate, um, and you can give these uh, you can give this to patients, um, and this is very important for treating and for protecting these patients against uh, any endometrial cancer, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is uh, so this is not maybe not treating the hyperandrogenism directly, but it treats the or protects the endometrium from any hyperplasia or cancer. Metformin again is uh, is a regulator of insulin signaling, and this has been um, been shown to help a little bit um, with with uh, the polycystic ovary syndrome uh, symptoms. Now, for patients that have uh, are not just not getting the effect that they want, they're not seeing you know the changes that they want. Maybe they still have hirsutism or or bad acne. You you can give these patients anti-androgens. Um, such as uh, spir spironolactone and uh, finasteride. Um, these two drugs can um, act to inhibit andro androgen influence and treat some of those hyperandrogenism uh, symptoms such as acne and hirsutism. And another set of uh, pharmacologics uh, is the gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonist, and that can help stabilize the menstrual cycle as well. Anyways, guys, that was a brief lesson on polycystic ovary syndrome. I hope you found it helpful, and thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.